All right, today we're here with Mario at his tattoo studio. We're gonna spend the day here with him and ask him all sorts of questions. I'm super interested to know how someone starts a tattoo shop. And in this video, we're gonna talk all about what it takes. So thanks Mario for hanging out with us awesome. and for letting us ask a ton of questions. Okay. <laughs> um, first off, when did, you, when did you even get into this? Like what's, how did you even end up here? Um, I read, uh, for those watching, I actually read about Mario in a, new, in a local newspaper and he just has this amazing backstory and I'd love for you to kind of just walk us through that because I think it's super inspirational. Okay, well, uh, I, you know, I mean, I did uh, some time in federal prison. I learned how to tattoo in there, came out and just started tattooing. But uh, yeah, so it just, that's how it started. <laughs> yeah, so how does that, I mean, tell me about that. That's, it's, that's a place most people couldn't even imagine like what how are people getting tattoos in prison well in prison uh you know people burn ink they make it with uh like a uh, petroleum jelly what they do is they burn they burn it right it's weird it's really hard to explain well not really hard to explain let's just say i had some vaseline in this thing yeah. right here and we filled it up and we turned it into a candle and uh so you'll put like a paper bag over it and it collects all the ashes so you you get that paper bag you like, and, you know, you unfold it and you scrape all those ashes. You put it in a little bit of uh, like soap and water and it's ink, tattoo ink. Oh, and that turns into ink. So what about the needle part of it then? How do the, they do the that? The needle part is you have to get uh, creative. So like, hopefully they'll have like a, uh, like let's just say um, um, wire brushes. Sometimes you could get a hold of guitar strings that rip or whatever. You just unwind them and there you go. You got a tattoo needle. Uh, also, um, there's also ways to do it with a, a staple or something, you know. What did you use? I, I use guitar strings. Guitar yeah. strings, yeah. huh? So they allow guitars in, in, in jail and then some guys have... Yeah, just uh, people usually have guitars, uh, you know, uh, just for recreation yeah. purposes and stuff like that. Yeah. So, and did you, did, were, did you do art before? Is that kind of your background and, and you were able to do it or did you learn it while you were in there? Well, when I was in there, I really did sharpen up on my skill in there. I, you know, you have nothing to do. You're just in there. And so uh, I started, uh, well, I, I ended up going to the Fed. So they had an oil painting program in there. And oh, nice. so I started off with that. Yes. And how many years were you in, in, uh, in the federal prison? I was in there for 10 years. 10 years. Yeah. So you had a lot of time to hone up your skill. Yeah. Did you feel like I'm, I guess I'm thinking about how many hours it took for you to get good. It, it, it was, it was uh, well, it started off with oil painting. So once I got my confidence with oil painting, it was one of those things that w when I started, I knew I liked it from the beginning. Awesome. It, you know, it was like, you know what? I, I just really liked oil painting. I had a few teachers in there too. And right away they thought that, I, you know, usually you're either going to like it or you're just going to try it one time and not. And next thing you know, I was oil painting. And yeah, you did, and you did this. Yeah. So yeah, so so that's yeah, pretty much. So it got into that, and then later on, somebody was like, "Hey, one of my buddies that you know we would oil paint together. We had like a little oil painting workshop. Yeah. He was like, hey, you know what? I got a machine. Like, you know, uh, you want to use it? You want to try it?'" And I was like, "Oh man, like I don't know. You know, I'm not too confident on that." So some friends of mine were like, "Hey, you know what? Practice on me." So what most people have are messed up prisons and I mean uh, tattoos in prison. You always see the ugly, even out here. They got ugly tattoos, and uh, so I was like, you know what, I was confident enough that I know I could fix it, so that's what I did. That's so cool. So this is where the magic happens, right here. This is where, uh, whenever I have free time, I come in here and I try to get some, some paint on, on the canvases. This is a custom size that I built. This is old Mexican uh, folktale. Yeah, what's this folktale called? Oh man, it's really hard to uh, pronounce it. It's like Tumlapec or something. It's it's really hard to to say. I, I, I can't even really pronounce it. <laughs> it, it even, even the lettering on it uh, is pretty tough. Yeah, that looks awesome. Um, okay, so you learn. You spent ten years honing your craft in there. Yes. You get out of. You you do your time. You come out, yeah. and t take me through how you even got from there to then starting your the the thought like how did you even come up with it? yeah so you know going in there i was practicing every day i probably tattooed like maybe for about five years uh in there you know just trying to get it down to the point where i, I was like i'm gonna do this when i get out did guys pay you in there yeah 
So they pay you with like commissary or or uh, sometimes they can send money to your books, you know. Uh, so I had a little bit of money saved up when I got out. Nice. You know, uh, tattoo artist in, uh, in prison is like a superstar in there. I had a five month waiting list in there. No way. Yeah. And also, too, I had a friend that had a tattoo shop and uh, he uh, he kind of told me he was like, hey, you know what? Uh, uh, the way you run the, your business in here is kind of like the way you run it out there. And I was like, what do you mean? He goes, yeah, you get your stencils ready. You wait for the client to come in, you know, you sit them down. You don't want to be doing your stencils or whatever while they're sitting down. Because we only had a certain time limit in there to do a tattoo. We had from a certain time to a certain time because then the guards, you know, the guards shift changes and stuff like that. We, we weren't allowed to tattoo in prison. It was illegal. So it was one thing you had to have uh, people looking out for you. It was, it was really stressful. And so being out here, it's a lot easier, but I do manage my time when people come in, they book a session, I'm like on it. Like they're getting their tattoo, they're getting big tattoos like in five hours. But yeah, I, I, make a, I try to make the most of my time. So tell me about, the, that's really interesting. I'm, so you, you, you got paid while you're doing it um, uh, kind of under the table in prison. Yeah. Um, when you came out, how much money did you need to start your actual? So, so uh, starting off, honestly, like, uh, yeah, I, I had a little bit of money, but you know, they have a lot of knockoff equipment and stuff like that. So I started buying knockoff stuff just to get my, my, you know, get the ball rolling on it, getting money to buy the machines. The machines that I'm using now, they're a lot more expensive from what I started. But yeah, it was just one of those things, word of mouth. You know, I had to work some odd jobs. Uh, you know, uh, I was working washing dishes. I was working at a, uh, um, at a, uh, like a breakfast place and stuff like that. But uh, yeah, it was, it was a process. It's not like one of those things overnight. You gotta put your name out there. You gotta get a clientele, all that stuff. So if somebody were to say, if somebody wanted to start a tattoo shop and they said, Mario, how much money do I need to start? Like yeah. how much, how much do I need to just start? What would you tell them? I would probably tell them maybe like about, you know, uh, if, uh, they don't have all their stuff. Um, Cause I acquired a lot of stuff over the years. Yeah. It took me about maybe like seven years yeah. to open up mine. But uh, um, yeah, it would probably be like, maybe it just depends on what type of shop they want. Like if they want a, a, a local spot to come in, they're just gonna, you know, uh, like let's say on 7th street, they're gonna need probably like maybe a hundred grand. Wow. Uh, yeah, a little shop like this, uh, you know, we're out here, we're a little more hidden. Uh, we're an appointment only shop. It was, uh, I probably, I opened it up like maybe with like about 50,000. 50,000. Yeah. It wasn't really that bad. Yeah. Yeah. And you had some of that money saved up. Well, uh, honestly it was like, I had like maybe like 25 of it. Yeah. And then I had to just, as I made money, just kept on putting it back in. Yeah. Yeah, opening it up, it was wasn't that. It was it was a challenge. It was. Uh, how did you? How did you? Yeah. I, before we started even recording, you mentioned that Roanoke, one of the cities, doesn't allow tattoos. Yeah. When it comes to like zoning laws, what's the? What did you figure out? So yeah. So uh, first thing I figured out, and I kind of already knew uh, from being in the industry, is um, is that they still look at these places kind of like they um, they classify it with the porn industry. So it's really hard to just be like, hey, um, you know, can I open up a tattoo shop in Keller? They don't allow it. Um, they don't do it here in Roanoke. And uh, there's little towns that do allow it. Fort Worth is pretty open. Uh, Arlington has a limit of tattoo shops. So right now they're maxed out at the limit of tattoo shops. So yeah, zoning was like the main thing. That's the main, the hardest part of the tat, the whole opening up a shop. And does it cost a lot for a license to do tattoos or is it just a matter of figuring out where you can and can't do it? It's pretty much, yeah, figuring it out. And so it doesn't cost a lot once you figure out yeah, where. Yeah, no, the uh, tattoo license is probably like about $1,000. And if you want to do piercings and stuff, that's like a $400. Got it. And do you have to renew that every year or is uh, it just a Every two years. Every two yeah, years. Yeah, every two years. Yeah, that's the, the license that I got for oh, here. Cool. Very cool. Yeah. Um, when, when you started, how did you think about customers? How did you find customers? So, yeah, so starting off, you know, word of mouth, uh, usually uh, also Instagram. Instagram is like my big tool. Uh, somebody told, taught me about hashtags, how to use hashtags. 
uh, you know, I, I was locked up 10 years, so I come out, I don't know anything about social media. I'm doing a tattoo in my apartment on this kid and he's like, hey man, you know, I, you know, I, he went to school for marketing, he told me about hashtags, how to use them. So that's how I got my first tattoo job. I uh, tattooed, uh, I, I guess I put Arlington tattoo, tattoo artist and some guy reached out to me. And uh, so there we go, I op it opened up the doors. And then after that, I, I was addicted to Instagram and you know, I was trying to get followers and stuff like that. That's and awesome. As those followers kept on coming and hashtags and stuff, uh, people started reaching out to me through DMs and, hey, can I get a tattoo? And, and they just, it grew from there. And then I started working at different shops uh, bringing my name out there, going to competitions, winning awards, uh, stuff like that gets your name out there in the industry. Yeah. And uh, people are always watching and posting, Snapchat, um, all that stuff. Now it's TikTok. I got that painting right there trending in TikTok, the one that you all saw outside. Oh, the one outside? Yeah. yeah. That, and you have other guys in your shop here doing yeah. tattoos. How, do, how does that work? Did you realize that you were getting more demand than you could handle or was it a matter of um, I got a lot of space here and so I can have more people in here H how did how did you think through bringing up so, so bringing on other people was one thing I didn't plan on doing right away I figured that I'd be like uh, here maybe for like a year and I was like you know what I have this space and why not right yeah. why not make money off of it so uh, I decided just to go ahead and do a booth rental but people came and approached me from being in the industry or people are like, hey, dude, where are you, you going to like, are you going to open up other stations? Yeah. So I was approaching. I'm like, you know what? I'll make your stations. So I made some stations for this girl, another girl that was here, but she just opened up her own shop. Oh, wow. Yeah. And so uh, uh, so he uh, he just started uh, today. He's he was working at another shop and uh, he's fixing to open up his, too. So yeah. So I told him, you know what, why don't you just hang out with me for a minute in, be, you know, in between. Yeah. And so is that how it works? It's booth rental. Yeah. So they pay for the space. Yeah, they pay for the space. And do they share revenue with you? No. Uh, no. So basically everything they make is is on them. They do their own paperwork. They file, you know, file their own taxes, everything. It's totally separate. So yeah, everybody's a, a pretty much a 1099. So any tattoo shop you actually go to, most of the time, there's nobody's ever on an hourly wage. It's always the 10.99. At other shops, they do sh share uh, their uh, like a 50% most of the time yeah. cut with the shop, but not this shop. This shop is more for somebody who already has their own clientele. Got it. Yeah, and then that's what I really wanted to cater to. I wanted to cater to more towards the artist than the actual shop. Yeah, if that and makes so, any sense. Yeah, and so for a booth, how much do you rent out a booth for? So uh, a booth normally uh, it goes for like a well, it starts maybe like uh, like three hundred dollars a week. Okay. And uh, that's like a going rate, uh, maybe three to four hundred, just depending on where you're at. Yeah. But yeah, this place right here, three hundred a week. I'd, I'd love to learn about the the economics of tattoos so pricing on a tattoo how do you even price a tattoo what's I guess let's start there how do you price a tattoo so uh, pricing a tattoo is basically uh, like let's just say you came in with your idea and you want a piece from here to here uh, you could do a flat rate and uh, charge them a flat rate if you want to uh, but once you've been tattooing for a while you already know your speed some people like to do it hourly uh, and some people like to just do a flat rate since uh, like I've been tattooing for uh 13 years already so i'm pretty fast uh when it comes to tattooing uh some people are a little bit slower so sometimes uh um, if they're a little bit slower an hourly rate would be better for them um but uh just like a what's an all-day session for you um um eight to ten hours yeah i see so like they just say you want to do a flat rate at eighteen hundred dollars uh for ten for ten hours straight oh got it that's like a that's that's how we normally price. Uh, but if I see a tattoo and I know it's only going to take me an hour or so, I'll be like 150, 150 an hour. Got it. And what about the average tattoo? What what do you think that comes in at? Uh, average tattoo, uh, you're at least going to spend a hundred dollars. If it's going to be something small, uh, it, times have changed. Uh, some people still want forty dollars tattoos. Can't really find them anywhere. Yeah. yeah. So about a hundred bucks. About a hundred bucks to uh, uh, to like. 400 to 50 usually my average tattoo um, they're they're always spending over 500 dollars. got it yeah uh, and then in a in a day well it sounds like in a day if a, a 500 dollar tattoo how many tattoos could you do in a day if you were totally booked out? if, if i was uh, totally booked out maybe i could probably knock out like three of them um you know uh 
in a day. Yeah. But I, I usually limit myself to one or two. Yeah. Okay. Is that more so just so you can slow down or just uh, just, just just like a uh, slow down and, and it's more about the customer here. Uh, you know, like since this ain't a walk-in shop, I'm not worried about people sitting down and waiting for tattoos, waiting on me. I'd rather have the customer, uh, you know, my full attention to the customer and so they can get whatever they want yeah. uh, and, and nothing rushed. So sometimes I even limit myself to one tattoo a day, but one big tattoo a day. Yeah. But there's some days I'm like, okay, I'm going to make like, you know, 1500 today. <laughs> so well, we're going to go, we're going to make that 1500. Yeah, these are just uh, awards that I've won in the past expos. Oh, and yeah. uh, going to expos and stuff like that really did open the doors for me. Really? Yeah, I went to my first expo. It probably took me about nine expos to win and, until I won my first award. Uh, but um, How do you find expos so, to show uh, at? So, so these guys right here, uh, Ink Masters, that's, that's one. Uh, um, that they're, they're basically kind of like a, um, they're, they're just like a group of people that they, they host a bunch of them. Uh, they got villain villain arts uh they got other ones too that they do once a year mm. they have one in galveston once a year they do one here in fort worth uh like me and you could host the expo if we would like uh, -huh. uh it's pretty much you just you got to be in the community they got to know people then you send out invitations uh, -huh. uh just get booths filled uh -huh. basically like a big tattoo shop for three days uh -huh. And you're renting out booths and uh so you rent them out and you compete and uh you might win you might lose yeah <laughs> but uh but it's always fun to go and, and it's also uh networking going out to yeah. the expos and stuff that's really what it's about yeah. once you start networking and stuff like that then you start seeing uh, uh other artists start you know following you and then next thing you know you're, you're their friends and then you're guest spotting at their shops and yeah. it's pretty fun right you talked you talked about uh social media and the power of that and how you came out of prison and suddenly you're introduced to social media. Um, how, do you, how do you think about it going forward? Are you just trying to be on every platform? Do you do it yourself? How have you kind of tried to maximize so, what uh, social media can do for you? So uh, content, uh, really content is one of the, uh, the, the things that I've been doing myself. Uh, I haven't gotten a content person yet. I was thinking about hiring somebody to do content for me. Uh, but yeah, just posting, showing people that we're out here busy that's really what opened the doors and what what, uh, it, what brings followers doing expos uh my uh, my followers and my viewers and stuff like that they always love uh seeing that we're out there in the industry competing and stuff like that so that's always helped that's helped me a lot Who, who helps you with the financial part of business? Because for a lot of guys, including myself, yeah. when I started, I knew nothing about accounting or how to file my taxes properly for the business. Yeah. How did you navigate all of that? So, um, who helped you? Honestly, uh, um, you know, I work on a lot of people. I have a lot of loyal customers coming back to me. A lot of these people own businesses, stuff like that. So just basically asking, hey, you know, you own a business. Where do you get your taxes done at? How do you do your accounting? Oh, you know, uh, a lot of my friends own tattoo shops and some of them are actually accountants uh, or their wife's an accountant or something. And so I'm, I'm just asking for advice most of the time. I'm trying, still trying to get it together yeah. when it comes to numbers and stuff like that. Uh, I did have a problem though. Um, I, I did owe on some taxes and that was one thing I did this year. I had to file like old taxes and stuff. And, but, uh, but yeah, so I'm just basically uh, people that, that's been helping me with my clients. Asking for good advice from people around <laughs> exactly. and finding your way and figuring it out. Exactly. And then also too, these are people I trust already. They trust me and so I'm already trusting them. So I trust that they're going to lead me in the right direction. Yeah, that's super smart. Such a good tip. Um, when, when it comes to starting a business, a lot of people watching this video, a lot of guys I talk to and probably some of the guys you talk to, uh, want to start a business but are scared, what's some advice you would give to somebody who's thinking about starting 
whether it's a tattoo shop or just any business in general. How do you get over that? Just research, uh, research, uh, get in the industry, get your foot in the door. If you are wanting to uh, uh, open up a dry cleaning business, go work at a dry cleaning place. Learn the ins and outs. That's the best thing to do. That's what I did. I, I learned the ins and outs. I, I, I went to other shops. I saw the way they manage their shops. And I figured that opened up, that told me what kind of shop I wanted to open up. So basically get your foot in the door and just go at it. Be disciplined, save your money, uh, do your taxes. <laughs> <laughs> Cause then it's all gonna come back to you, but yeah, but yeah, just you, you, you just kind of, uh, uh, you know, I had to put off uh, vacations and stuff like that. Most of, I opened this during like COVID time, so we weren't doing nothing anyway. Uh, I was tattooing uh, at a special location, but uh, I was just like, yeah, you know what? I'm not spending any money going out. We have all this extra money. My, well, let's just do it. Yeah, that's amazing. That's such good advice. I was just thinking like how how important it is to just get in and try and learn as you go along. I'd love to know like the, the, the thoughts you have for growth because you this space is pretty new. I mean, you started during COVID. I know you had mentioned off camera that this place you built pretty much yourself. Yes. This interior uh, area here and you're looking at building more. When you think about growing, how have you thought about it? Is it you want more booth space or you wish you could do more or what do you think the so, future is? So uh, the future for me, the, the ideal future is because sometimes I always have this stuff in my head. I got all this space I could run. I was uh, one time I was thinking about doing a shirt press. I print my own t-shirts. And so I was thinking, man, maybe I might get into uh, doing a, a, you know, screen printing. But the, the thing really for me would be booth space to add on to this. So I could have more booth space, uh, more revenue coming in. Yeah. And, and uh, what would that take to get you there? So uh, basically, uh, you know, just money. <laughs> money, time, and patience, you know? Yeah, and yeah. how much money do you think you'll need to get to the spot where you can grow? Man, I, you know I mean? I, it's kind of hard to say right now, especially with the way this market is. Uh, the wood prices and stuff like that go up. Uh, when, I, when, I op when I started this, uh, I think uh, like a two by four was going for like uh, $4. Yeah. And then uh, uh, maybe, uh, like so i ordered everything and then i went back to the store and it went to eight dollars and i was like wait a minute and i had to look at my receipts so yeah just depending on how stuff is with the market and stuff like that but uh i'm thinking maybe you know i mean i'm thinking maybe like maybe around sixty thousand, yeah. just to get started yeah. but i know it's going to be more than that it's always more yeah <laughs>
like art sh um like art festivals yeah. and stuff so i was like you know what let's name it saint cecilia yeah, yeah. that's awesome why don't you show us uh, some of the tools you use okay. mario because a lot of us don't don't know how that works And then Isaac, if you want to sit down here, we're going to get that dragon tattoo for your chest that we were talking about <laughs> what about before. You? What about you, Spencer? Mine, mine's going to go on a part that your you skin, can't see. So. Your skin looks so clean, so it needs light. So, uh, so this is a, uh, this is a ma tattoo machine. Uh, this is a con it's called a, it's a, it's a bishop, it's a rotary machine. Uh, so what a rotary machine is, it has a spinning motor. And what it does is it pushes a uh, um, it pushes a little mechanism inside up and down, and this is actually very close to the machines we had in prison. So when I came out, I was like, "Oh man, this is just kind of like a like we would call them a spinner, a spinner motor." And uh, so it got really popular here lately. Uh, before they used to use the ones that were coils, and they would make a lot of noise. It'd be like, eh. yeah. so these are more uh, like the new thing. But yeah, so this is considered a rotary. And uh, now we have, uh, you know, battery packs and now they're cordless. So this is, uh, you know, this is what we use right here. And it has uh, uh, like adjustment on the speeds and stuff like that. This one even has a little time thing where it, it could tell you how long the machine has been on for. And if you're charging by uh, hour or, you know, minutes or whatever, you, you could actually do it from right here. Yeah, pretty neat. Uh, we use iPads now uh, for our designs. Everything's digital. Um, you know, rinse cups. Uh, of course, your inks. Uh, we got, uh, you know, sanitation, Metaside, green soap. Uh, green soap is uh, something that you mix with uh, water. You uh, put them in one of these and you, you mix it around. You clean the tattoo with it, stuff like that. a and ointment, uh, razors, needles. Let me show you what it is. Yeah. So all these right here are all disposable. And this, what, this uh, is what makes uh, opening up a tattoo shop also, uh, it's a big deal because if you tell them that you use disposable, you don't have to have a uh, room to sterilize anything. Oh, yeah. So you also, you cut, you cut it by being disposable. Everybody yeah. uses disposable now these days anyway. Yeah. So yeah. Where do, you, where do you buy all these supplies? So, so there's a, a, a truck that comes by, it's a supply truck, a tattoo supply truck. They come by and they just, uh, they come by every Friday. And uh, uh, they're a bunch of, it's a veteran owned, a uh, new company that they just started. And they, they come by, they're mobile. And so, so they, they know all the tattoo shops. They know all and the tattoo visit. shops and stuff like that. They only sell to, to licensed uh, tattoo, uh, tattoo shops. Sure. So, uh, so yeah, so once they find out, they'll come and you know, they come once a week. And how do you pay? Just by credit card right there? Oh, yeah. Or these, is it on these, terms? Now these days, we could sell them money. We could pay credit card. We pay them cash. They, they pretty much, they take everything now these days. That's yeah. awesome. Can you show us some tattoos that you've done recently on the iPad? This one took me about five hours. And it goes all the way up his arm right there. Uh, we still got other spots to finish, but yeah. but yeah, I do I do a little bit of everything. This one took a few sessions. I probably did like four sessions into this one. And uh, yeah, it's uh, like two dragons. Wow. Yeah, let me show you. Uh, oh, this one right here was pretty neat. I've been tattooing this kid since he was uh, 18. He actually got kicked out of his house for getting the first tattoo that I did on him. And uh, now he uh, works at the Air Force. And so I finished off his sleeve. It's, it, right. it's crazy the stories that come with these tattoos. Yeah. Like I remember this kid when he come, came in, his brother told him, are you serious? Are you gonna, you know, you're gonna get kicked out of your house. And he was like, no, I already paid the deposit. And yeah, they kicked him out of the house that day and it uh, pushed him to uh, find a future in the military. Yeah. And it's crazy. It just Yeah, it's really interesting. That's, that's probably the best thing about this, uh, about this, uh, this job. Yeah, I do a little bit of everything. 
how do you do the stencil? How do you do the drawings to to show them? Because they okay. are they coming with something, or did you or do you draw something up for so, them? So so uh, usually people come in with an idea, and uh, let's just say for instance they uh, they want a um, a flag. Right, so I get the flag. I could either find it online, a digital flag that's already made, or let's just say that this guy doesn't, he wants it a little more tattered than that. I could get my iPad and, you know, make it a little more tattered, right? And then what I do is I print it out. Let me show you an example. And um, let's just say this is uh, the tattoo, right? That we're gonna put on here. These are pretty much the sizes that it's going to print out. So what we do is we put it through this uh, stencil machine and um, let me show you. I'm like, wow, it's not working. So you put it through the stencil machine right like this yeah. and then this right here will feed into that yeah. and then uh, it'll, it will print out on this so that these lines will print out on this mm -hmm. so once it prints out on this we'll take it out and then we'll put it on you with uh with a special ointment Got it. and uh, uh you know after we clean the surface and and uh, uh and you know cut the hair on there and yeah, stuff yeah, like yeah. that shave it mm -hmm. super cool yeah man if if there's one last tip that you could tell a new entrepreneur who's thinking about starting a business what would it be mario uh, a tip, uh, do your research. <laughs> uh, what else? Another tip would probably be, uh, you know, just get a, um, I guess, um, you know, just be a people person, you know, just know how people want to be treated. Uh, I think uh, that's always helped me out with other employers that I had. Yeah, yeah. that's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> thanks for hanging out with us. Um, a, a big thanks to Mario for sharing his story. Super inspirational. Um, a true entrepreneur in my book and uh, and I appreciate his time if you want to check out another video I'm gonna leave one up right here go ahead and click on that and thanks for hanging out with us we'll see you in the next video